Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of WWE Raw. WWE issue an official statement on the whole Sasha and Naomi situation. We have some backstage notes on the cancelled angle from last night's episode of Raw. And the opponent for Ric Flair's last ever wrestling match may have been revealed. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. All right, we're going to kick things off by talking about the story that is everywhere. It's not a work. It's not a fictional construct designed to generate pro wrestling drama. This actually happened. Uh, Naomi Sasha Banks, the women's tag team champions in WWE, walked out of last night's episode of Raw. Um, this was acknowledged on air. Corey Graves spat out some quite clearly a Vince McMahon line yep. about being unprofessional uh, during the broadcast. WWE as a product of all this had to rewrite large chunks of the show. Uh, there was a bunch of like backstage segments that were added that weren't there previously and lots of stuff going on, but Fightful Select came through with the most comprehensive report on this whole deal. Uh, talking about how Sash Banks specifically wasn't satisfied with the creative plans for Raw. And now she reportedly had a meeting with Vince McMahon to voice her displeasure, uh, but neither party was willing to budge on their position. Now, Part of this uh, whole deal was there was going to be a six-pack challenge in mm -hmm. the main event of Raw, right? For the number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship, it was going to be Sash Banks, Naomi, Dewdrop, Nikki Ash, Asuka, and Becky Lynch. Winner was going to go and face Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell. The planned finish for that match was going to be Naomi winning it, beating Nikki Ash, oh. getting the title shot at the pay-per-view. Instead, we got uh, Becky versus Asuka, uh, and Asuka ended up winning. So that's the pay-per-view match now. Good but match, that, to be yeah. fair. Good match, but there's a lot of uh, baggage that comes yes. with the booking, obviously. Now, um, or complications that come with the booking. Mm. But yeah, we'll continue here. Uh, Banks and Naomi, the crux of this is that they felt that they weren't being respected enough as women's tag team championships, uh, with the, di the direction of their division a major sticking point here. They also felt uncomfortable being in the ring, apparently, uh, with two of their opponents for this six-pack challenge, where they have wrestled everyone in that match in the past with zero issues. Now, WWE talent that Fightful spoke to had not actually heard uh, of, of Sasha and Naomi considering any of the other wrestlers unsafe uh, until WWE's official statement was released, which we'll get to in just yes. a minute. Uh, now, prior to the walkout, Banks and Naomi had been given apparently eight hours to go over and put together the match, uh, but what they ended up doing was uh, they, they, they walked out on the show. Uh, they went into John Laurinaitis' office, they put their tag team championships down and they shoot walked out of the show. Becky Lynch was the one who informed Adam Pearce, who was of course the on-air authority figure in WWE that they were gone. Um, now, there's more. There's more, my friends. Uh, reportedly, Sasha and Naomi wanted to work with Nikki Ash and Dewdrop at Hell in a Cell, but that pitch was rejected. The second pitch was to have uh, the Scottish team, Nikki Ash and Dewdrop, interfere in the Raw Women's Championship match at that pay-per-view, which would have been oh, Naomi awesome. versus Bianca. That too was turned down. Now, there was a report going around that the, the, the six-pack challenge was gonna be Naomi pinning Sasha. That's been shot down right. by Fightful here. So if you see that buzzing around, you can probably disregard it. Uh, I'm gonna keep on going, my friends. I'm sorry, there's so much to get through here and I wanna do it justice. Uh, now, as we mentioned, this necessitated a bunch of rewrites for the show. There were segments put together to fill the holes uh, and word that they had left the show uh, made it outside of the promotion by the time that Raw hit the airwaves. So Fightful also note that uh, the match was constructed, the six-pack challenge was constructed to ensure that Naomi and Sasha would not interact uh, and, and Dewdrop and Nikki wouldn't come into contact with each other either. So there you go, that's the crux of it. Now, obviously in, in situations like this, people are very quick to make snap, swooping judgments that, that take a side and, and it becomes very tribal and very hostile and, and, and all of this when, to me, this is still a developing story. Yes. Right? My initial instinct in situations like this is to side with the workers and 100%. 100% uh, yeah. You know, it's a billionaire corporation. Uh, it sounds to me like there's a detail to this that hasn't yet come out because part of the creative frustration here comes from something that was going to result in Naomi getting a title shot. Um, 
clearly they felt that whatever was going to happen here was to the detriment of their women's tag team championships uh, and the division and the hard work they've put into getting over. Uh, and uh, Sasha's had this situation twice, right? Yes. Where she's previously when her and Bailey were the champions, and then she she took some time off after WrestleMania 35. Five, yeah. Five. Uh, she's previously invested a lot of time and effort into building these divisions up. So if a creative idea comes along that makes them look foolish and, uh, and renders their hard work in their eyes meaningless, I can understand why they would go, no, screw this, this is nonsense. Um, yeah, lot, lots of stuff still to come out here. Uh, it, it's all kicking off. You got some more details. Yes, I'll, I've got some things I want to say about this, but before I do that, I should report the uh, the statements that WWE released regarding this oh, matter. Boy. because. <laughs> oh, 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 anyway, let me just read it. I'll just say verbatim what they've done and then we can talk a little bit more about it. When Sasha Banks and Naomi, WWE writes, arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE Head of Talent Relations, John Laurinaitis' office, as Andy reported, with their suitcases in hand, placed their tag team championship belts on his desk and walked out. They claimed they weren't respected enough as tag team champions. And even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret we were unable to deliver, as advertised, tonight's main event. Not only that though, Andy, we got a report from WrestleVotes providing an update on this, stating uh, that a source noted that WWE statements, the WWE statement that I just read you regarding the Sasha and Amy walkout is just the baseline of the details. The tension leading up to the walkout was palpable all day Day, with both superstars upset at something that transpired. More details will come out in due time on this, which again adds credence to Andy's point of let's wait till we have not necessarily all the facts, but, but certainly more, more of them. Yeah. Having said that, having completely agreed with everything you've said, I'm going to go two footed in on this, right? Because <laughs> this is some of the dumbest booking I've heard from WWE. We're not going to go broken Adam because I don't want a broken yeah, world do because do I'm not, this isn't a gimmick. This is me genuinely pissed off for the state of the women's tag team division and how are they handling two of their biggest stars, one of whom, Sasha Banks, nothing against Naomi, but Sasha Banks, I've seen from the Dadleys, from yourself, have been saying, uh, basically could be the female Roman Reigns in this conversation. Sasha Banks is the best women's wrestler in WWE history. Yes. So, you plan this six-pack challenge. Do you know what? I'm kind of all right with this being a six-pack challenge because I watched, I saw the graphic for that and went, cool, that's a fun way of getting to Hell in a Cell because I thought Hell in a Cell was going to be, right, so you don't have to meet Asuka this way. You don't have a one-on-one -on -one match with Bianca Belair. You have Asuka, uh, Becky Lynch, and Bianca Belair in a triple threat. Becky gets pinned at Hell in a Cell. How do they get there? Maybe Asuka wins the six-pack and Becky weasels her way in through management or shenanigans or whatever, basically, right? That's them taken care of. And then who are the other four women? Oh, look, you've got the tag team champions and a newly formed tag team. Wait a second. Maybe they could collide in the six-pack challenge, take all four of them out of it. Like, maybe Nikki A.S.H. is getting her ass beaten by Sasha and Naomi. And do, do that. Finally goes, oh, you know what? I'm going to show you what a team we could be as the bloody Scots, right? And she lays out Sasha and Naomi and then helps Nikki to the back. Yeah. And there you go. Then you've just got Ash. You got two matches. Rubber. It's really easy. Got two matches. It's so simple. And also, like, I don't even get started about this women's tag team division because don't. it's the most don't. lazily booked, yeah. hastily put together tag team. Like after you had Shayna and Natalia, you're like, okay, cool. Well, who have you got left to face? Anyone? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 But Andy, your thoughts? Because I've ranted. I apologise. <laughs> no, you're you're well within your rights. I think. Um, I think at the core, Sasha Banks, there's an argument to be made that Sasha Banks is WWE's most valuable full-time star, right? Because when you look at the quarter hour ratings numbers, uh, she is continually the one, every single time, who's when she's involved in a significant segment, goes up. Yes. It goes up every single time. She has a major crossover appeal. She's been in The Mandalorian. She will surely get further acting opportunities in the future. She's a tremendous ambassador. And on top of that, like I said earlier, and like, I'm not even willing to argue about this point because I, I, I agree with it so much. She's the greatest all-round women's wrestler in WWE history. She should have the world in this yes. company. She should be presented in the same way as Roman Reigns, for me, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean holding a belt for two years like Roman's gonna do or whatever, but she should continually be the top person in her division, in the company. Should be her and Roman for me, the two faces of the company. Now, obviously you cycle people up and down. You might go, oh, Becky, you know, was 
on fire. Yeah. 2018, 19, there you go. Cool, you do stuff like that. But for me, Sasha Banks should have the world uh, when it comes to booking. You should not even, not even like, oh, well, you know, we, you know, we like her and she's popular in that, but yeah. like, you know, can she really go? She had a five star match at WrestleMania she, with Bianca Belair. She's phenomenal. She uh, like. And they're just gonna feed her and Naomi to the women's champions. It sounds. It sounds that way. It sounds like Naomi was gonna win this and then lose to Bianca Belair at the pay per view. And it's like well, two you, baby faces facing each other. Why? Yeah, and you've got these. Uh, her and Sasha have put so much effort into trying to make these belts mean something, and they've gotten over, and they've got great chemistry, and they've worked really hard to try and make this work. And then you march into a, commu uh, a, a, a booking meeting with Vince or John Laurinaitis or whoever and they go hey you're gonna win but then you're gonna lose to the champion which I presume is was gonna be the plan uh, we're gonna completely ignore your belts for a month yeah I mean I 100% get where they're coming from based on the information they currently have now um, I eagerly await more information coming forward and I reserve my right to alter my opinion on this um, but I don't necessarily think I'm going to either way this is a gigantic story this is something we're going to be talking about all week if not longer more details are going to emerge more fallout is going to come through uh, and you'll probably hear more from us later on and that, the thing is aside from that Really enjoyed Monday Night Raw this yeah, week. Yeah, I don't care. Ezekiel, Ezekiel <laughs> I, Chad Gable, lots of fun. Kevin Owens, excellent on commentary. Yeah. The, even the put together, hastily put together Becky Lynch Asuka match with the mist and that, that, that. All good stuff, right? But this completely overshadows everything as it should. Yeah, I couldn't care less about the perceived quality of Raw because this is uh, far bigger. Yeah. yeah. What have we got next? Yeah, what do we have next? Um, <laughs> why the hell are we talking about other stories? Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> rattle through these next two quite quickly. And Cancelled thing from Raw. Cancelled angle, if you if you will. Um, oh, yeah. Right, Omos and Bobby Lashley had their cage match last night. It ended when Lashley got lobbed through the wall. We've seen the finish before. Who um, who could have predicted that, uh, Shut up. Oh, is that me? <laughs> is that me up. getting another prediction right, Get guys? Check my Twitter, at Adam Wilborn. Get sort of predicted it. Yep, yep, Still yep. counts. There's a bin over there. <laughs> uh, uh, obviously, he went through the wall. He ended up, Bobby hit, ended up going to the floor, so he won the match. He, you know, no pin, no submission, all of that stuff. They're trying to preserve the feud for another match because the feud must continue. Um, but Please WrestleVotes man. actually tweeted uh, prior to Raw, uh, I'll just read the tweet to you. Uh, over the course of the past week, there was an idea for a collapsing ring angle during the cage match on Raw tonight with Omos and Lashley. I've heard that the idea got squashed over the weekend and their opinion is good, it's overplayed. So WWE have done this a lot. It's yes. quite a common trope when there's gigantic men in the ring uh, having it collapse. Obviously, Big Show uh, has done this like seven times. <laughs> uh, uh, was the last one? Henry, Strowman. Henry. Yep. Lesnar, obviously. Was, was Big Show and Braun the last one? I feel like it was. Maybe this one it was. still feels relatively recent. Yeah, yeah, that was actually like quite an important part in getting Braun over as a monster back in the day. But yeah, no, like, I, I, I feel like it would have been quite dangerous to do this with a steel cage around the ring. Yeah, maybe, where maybe, did that go? Where did the sides go? Uh, yeah, I don't do they know. they go as well? Do they just dissolve into a puddle? Stay there? No. They're like the casual fan when you don't beat them over the head with a point, they dissolve into a puddle of goo. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't really need to see that anymore. The collapsing ring, like, you sparingly, it can be quite effective. And I know it's not happened in a few years, but I think we've had enough of those for a while. I think the way they did it was, was the right way to do it. It was either, for me, going to be that, or like a Lashley spear through, like a bit that they did with Brock and Roman yeah. a while back. Um, but yeah, I, I just think every time you do the collapsing ring, it gets it gets lessened in its effect, yeah. and that also applies to the previous occasions yes. that it's happened. Because you're like, oh, cool, they've just worked out how to you really easily do that. Whereas the first time, people were like, holy, sh that's actually happened. Yeah, I just, yeah, I think it was the right decision, and. Uh, yeah, I don't need the feud to continue, but if you're going to do it, then that was a great way of extending it. I well, suppose. we got next week the Almighty Challenge. Yes. Is he? What's he? Is this going to be like? Remember when he did the assault obstacle course? course? Yes, please. It was like the, it was so almost awesome. just runs through everything. <laughs> MVP tries like earnestly does all the stuff does all the stuff and then almost just goes boom. <laughs> just runs through like <laughs> that's actually great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Let's conclude. We reported a little bit on this yesterday regarding Ric Flair having another wrestling match <laughs> uh, and ESPN's Mark Raimondi. Uh, I don't it's know why I said it French. like that. <laughs> Mark Raimondi has reported that uh, hey, the seventy-three-year-old ex-wrestler, I should say, uh, could well be competing over SummerSlam at a weekend in 2022, a Nashville Fairgrounds event that is going to be streamed on Fight TV. This would be his first match since September 2011 when he faced Sting in uh, TNA. 
And uh, the other report, sorry, Rick, I should say, has issued a statement uh, regarding SummerSlam and the weekend StarCast convention. I'm going to walk that aisle one last time to prove once and for all that to be the man, you've got to beat the man. Further development this coming from Fightful Select, no crap, just sap, that his opponent could well be... 69-year-old, nice, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, who also hasn't wrestled since June 2010. Now, this may not be just a straight-up one-on-one match, please God, no. Uh, but as we've previously reported, it could also include AW's FTR and the Rock and Roll Express, with them being partners, basically. Um, Tony Khan hasn't signed up on it yet. No, exactly. What are your thoughts on all this? Uh, mm, yep. Let's go to the questions. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I love just... Ricky Steamboat's one of my favorite wrestlers. I love Ricky. Ric Flair is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I don't need to see this. No. I don't. I don't, I don't. I'm just scared more than anything, not not highly anticipating this match. And I've no yeah. doubt that FTR and they'll take the Rock and Roll Express can pull a great match out yeah, of anyone. They'll they'll, put a great match out of me, but they'll take good care of them and like they'll they'll configure it in a way where no one really needs to take any bumps. Like at least Rick and and, and Steam who knows, maybe Steamboat's okay. I don't know. The best wrestling retirement of all time. And then he thought. Nah, let's go do yeah, some more, shall we? Let's ruin, ruin it twice. Yeah. Twitter questions <laughs> at What Culture WWE. Of course, we're going to get in touch with this first question today. It comes from Mike on the mic. Oh, I oh, know it's Mike on the mic. Yeah. Mike says, yeah. "Morning, guys. Thank if you. WWE decides to have the Usos continue and unify the championships on SmackDown, do you believe WWE will keep the belts on the Usos and either tie or surpass the New Day as the longest tag team reign in WWE history?" Um, I think the current plan is for them to not unify the belts, as reported last week. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think they are going to be unify the belts as with the Usos, but I don't think they'll break the New Day's record. Mm -hmm. um, but. I don't know who on earth takes it off them. Yeah, yeah, that really built up. Sim kind of similar to Roman, really, in that they've not really spent time to build up like a believable challenger. Yeah, you know what? I, do you know what I also think? Please don't break up RK, bro. Why don't you just do the New Day thing that you did with them? Like, I don't need to see a split now. I've always thought, oh, that's where we're <laughs> heading. But how about split they get be... separated? Split would be really good for them. It'd be so good. Nah, no, but I did. Like... It'd be such a good feud. Imagine like Randy. He's so motivated now and like turning heel. It'd be no, so he's, awesome. like, this is the best version of Randy I've seen in years. Yeah, but it could Why be even have better. Him? He gets drafted to SmackDown. Riddle's all devastated, but Riddle has to build himself up to be a you know number one contender on on Raw basically. Riddle, Riddle, sorry, Orton can immediately go into a title match basically with with Roman Reigns and have that all sort of hanging over him. And then you can have a moment in Survivor Series where they like, oh, we used to like. There's so many teams splitting up at the moment. It, I don't think it would have the impact that we think it would but have. This one even is though. like so over. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, so why don't you just leave it? Because that because it won't be over forever. You no, but you can come back thing. to it. We'll have to agree yeah, to disagree exactly. on this. This is the best thing about wrestling. You're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> Jackie Higgins uh, says, uh, Andy Murray, king of the letter H. Oh, and the king oh, of the mic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why yes, did you Jackie, that? thank you. Oh! <laughs> we need this. Oh. Give. <laughs> so I lost the two. I lost the news. Hey, it's over. Uh, Jackie writes: uh, If you could pick your own Survivor Series team from any promotion, who would be your four? Top heel or babyface champion, mid card champion, and tag champion can be from any era and call it. Oh my goodness gracious me! Right. Um, Should we do one each? Should we alternate? Yeah, let's do it. Right, you do the world champion. <laughs> oh, world champion. So you have to be a current world champion. I, well, any era, any era. Any, oh, any, oh, I didn't even. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it has to be from one promotion as well. Oh. Interesting. We changed ourselves into a corner here. Well, I mean, no. why would you, oh, why would you pick anyone over there? Are, you, are we just going to make the bloodline? Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> I'm going to go Roman Reigns, the Usos, and Sami Zayn. <laughs> so, the there he is, the real bloodline hey. man, Sami Zayn. Let's uh, just pick, let's bollocks, let's just pick any, let's pick pick any four. All right, okay. Uh, top guy, who's, who's top guy? Who's top guy? Uh, FTR, top guys. There you go, that's our tag team. Yes. Uh, that'll do. Um, who would they really like working with? I'll tell you who they really like. Mick Hart Chabby and Arn Anderson. There you go. Oh, they would enjoy that. Okay. They would, they Arn would. Anderson, FTR, and we need a world champion here. Yeah. David Arquette. <laughs> there we go. They love their wrestling history, FTR, so pair them with. What's wrong, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Thought you'd like this. Shout out to David Arquette, by the way. Yeah, top one. Well, check out that, that film of his where you cannot kill David Arquette. Yeah, it's really great. Oh, it's amazing. It's really great. 
Uh, right, final question today comes from CM Chunk, whose name is now Follow Fat House and very nice. That's very the fat. former Fat Momoa, I yes. believe. Legend of the channel. Uh, what match are you more upset we never got to see? HBK versus Brett Rubber match, Goldberg versus Austin, or Sting versus Tiku? <laughs> Sting versus Tiku, you could have done the face paint stuff. Yes. Um, I missed the first two. What were they? HBK Brett Rubber match. Oh, um. Yeah, I mean, HBK and Brett is really difficult because it's so fraught with, with things. What was the Goldberg one? Austin. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like them two, at their, it wouldn't have been the best technical match of all time, but I think they'd have done something really fun and it would have been really over and it appeals to my sensibilities as a wrestler. I've got a great bit of booking as well to protect both men, right? Goldberg beats Stone Cold Steve Austin. Here versus here match? No. Oh. Goldberg beats Stone Cold Steve Austin, but after the match, Stone Cold Steve Austin stands up and looks at Goldberg. Remember how that got the Fiend back on track? <laughs> He's fine, you remember, because he stood up and looked at him. Yeah, he stood up and looked at him in Saudi Arabia, and Michael Cole went, Goldberg must sense the presence of the fiend, and Goldberg's just standing there like, what's this What's this guy doing? What's going on? Like, he doesn't even turn around, senses the presence of the fiend. What a load of pish. That match is an avant-garde classic. Yeah, he tweeted this yesterday, didn't he? Yeah. 50 years from now, it'll be in a museum in Florence. Mm. That's, that's, that's how great it is. Let's move on to today's and finally, and uh, it's not great. something I would genuinely encourage you to go out and watch on the internet today is from one Smart Mark Sterling, off of, well, managing half of AEW's roster, presumably. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he has uh, given out uh, an, an appeal for uh, all injured black shirt security guards. <laughs> Hashtag stop the rage, call now, and uh, he's looking for settlements against uh, Wardlow. He's such I, a goober, isn't he? I he's, love him so much. So good at being I a want goober. Him, I want him to turn up to Double or Nothing, because obviously he just got powerbombed through the table by yeah. Wardlow. He's in Tony Nese with his tiny knees as corner. Uh, at he's the, he's on teaming the buy -in. Yeah, he's on the buy-in. Yeah. And he's Jay Cargill's representative yeah. as well. I want, by the end of Double or Nothing, him to be in a full body cast. <laughs> like, just like that on the, the Dynamite Getting after. wheeled out. Yeah. Oh, just man. having someone holding his mic for him so he can pass legal judgment Can't on take stuff. a powerbomb when you're in a full body cast, I guess. He's played that one. Sure. Challenge smart. accepted. I'd like to see him. Do what if they hook him to something and just get pulled away? <laughs> oh! Well, like under the ring. Yeah. Gets eaten by the fiend. Oh my god, what if they're like a crocodile? Like oh, the flat. Flatty. We need a word, we need a word we can say for the flat F U C K that isn't swearing. Flatty. I like Flatty, flat. yeah. Flat boy. Flatty. Flat soul. Flatty McFlat face. <laughs> <laughs> right, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news Ernest stories. The flat. <laughs> Miller. <laughs> your thoughts in the comments. The Cheshire flat. Like, share, subscribe. Subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily <laughs> wrestling podcasts. We're going to be discussing all the fallout from this Sasha and Naomi situation and other stuff that happened on Monday Night Raw as well. Hardy. As well as looking forward to NXT. To Oh, a little bit later on today. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at WhatCultureWW. Watch there, follow both of us. Follow Andy Murray at... Follow me at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for hey. I'm about to take my clothes down to the... Wondro flat. <laughs> follow, follow me on uh, on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Mr. Croc's uh, favourite type of bread is flatbread. flatbread. Uh, <laughs> follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks, Andy Murray, to the flat flipper, and to you for watching. We'll what, see you what's soon. What's his favourite Indian starter? Go it's on. flat with two A's rather than a chat with two A's. It's also my favourite star, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs>